September saw a historic number of capital punishments in the United States. Five people on death row were executed in just one week. It is a stark contrast to the years long trend of declining use and support of the death penalty. One of the five was Marcellus Khalifa Williams, a Missouri man incarcerated for more than 20 years for a murder conviction. Williams faced execution twice before and each time he was granted a stay after a lack of clear DNA evidence and new information about the jury. Despite the public outcry and even prosecutors and the victim's family opposing his death, Williams was executed last week on September 24th. Joining me now is one of Williams' attorneys and partner at the BCLP law firm in St. Louis, Jonathan Potts. Jonathan, thanks so much for joining me and for your time this morning. I want to start with, you know, the fact that despite that public outcry, both the Missouri and U.S. Supreme Court refused to halt his execution. Your thoughts on that decision? Yeah, it was very disappointing to see the way that the court system reacted. It, as you were just talking about, this is a case where not only did we have evidence that there was an unfair trial, but the actual local prosecutor's office had come out opposing the execution, saying that their office had committed constitutional errors. And then on top of that, you have the victim's family who were saying that they didn't want Mr. Williams to be executed. It, it seemed like it was the exact formula for why we needed to stop the execution, make sure we didn't go through with it. So that didn't happen. what was the reason uh, given for not stopping the execution? If you could sum it up, I'm sure it's complicated. Yeah, the reason it, it's just arcane legal doctrines that pretty much ignore common sense. You've had hmm. a situation where there were discriminatory actions taken with respect to jury selection. There was contamination of evidence by uh, the prosecutor, but the court said that they technically weren't enough to stop an execution. Well, I, I know while he was incarcerated, Williams became an imam and he was also a poet. What was it like to get to know and represent him during this battle? Any death row case is going to be an emotional roller coaster. Mm -hmm. I can tell you that working with Mr. Williams, he was a kind, soft-spoken man. Throughout the entirety of this process, he was always holding out hope that the criminal justice system was going to live up to our expectations and carry it through with its promise, but that didn't happen. Um, at the end, though, he was at peace. As you said, he was a deeply religious man and he came to terms with his own mortality. Can I ask, you said it's a deeply emotional, um, you know, to represent somebody on death row, and now your client, Mr. Williams, you know, has been put to death. How does that impact you? It, it carries an emotional toll. It, um, it's something that's carried a toll with every single person on the team, and it's traumatic. And, and I, I honestly think it's traumatic for everyone who's part of the system. I mean, you, you cannot forget about the victim's family, and part of this is, this is traumatic for them as well because they did not want him to be executed. It's a very, now, uh, yeah, oh, I'm sorry, carry on. No, and now he has been, and so that's something that they have to carry on top of the first tragedy. It's very complicated, I know. Uh, now, previously, you helped exonerate three men who were wrongfully convicted of murder. Do you firmly believe that Williams was innocent? Yes. I firmly believe that he was innocent, that he didn't receive a fair trial, and that just as a society, we owed him more than that. If, as a society, we're going to be executing our own citizens, we need to make sure that we are just as confident about their guilt on the day of their conviction as we are on the day of his execution. People can have differing views on the death penalty, but I think that we owe each other that as a society. According to the Innocence Project, there's another man in Texas who is now facing execution on October 17th, so just in a few weeks. Are you concerned about the proliferation of these recent executions? And if so, why? Of course we're concerned. My biggest concern is that executions, we are, we're in the middle of a political cycle right now, an election cycle. And unfortunately, it's an easy way to score some political points as you're going into the November elections right now look tough on crime, and we need to make sure that executions aren't treated as political chips. This is about the justice system, and it's about making sure that we are giving people due process and that we are doing what's right for our communities and our families. 
You know, I remember uh, at least here in Illinois, 25 years ago, thereabouts, 20, 25 years ago, the death penalty issue was uh, a hot button topic and it ended with former Governor George Ryan calling for a moratorium on death penalty or executions here. I feel like in the last 10 years maybe um, that topic politically has lost steam. Do you feel that way and do you think that it should be part of every party's political platform so people know clearly, voters know clearly, where um, elected officials may stand? So what I would say is I want to make sure that this topic does not lose steam. At the same time, when you politicize it, it it's invited into this conversation where you have to pick a side. Mm -hmm. And really, it shouldn't be about picking a side. It should be about having an informed electorate who, when they go on jury service, they know the consequences of their decisions when they're going in there and being asked to decide whether to deliver a sentence of death to a stranger and whether you actually know whether that person is truly guilty or innocent and whether that person got a fair trial. Jonathan Potts, one of the attorneys representing uh, Marcellus Williams and partner at BCLP Law in St. Louis, I really appreciate your insight and your conversation this morning. Thank you. Thank you, Dana.